Hello, my name is Raul Sleeman and today I'm going to be walking you through how to create a vagrant to development environment. So what is vagrant? Well, vagrant is a development tool which allows you to script the creation of a development environment inside a virtual machine. Alright, so how does this help me? Well, if you ever face a situation where you try to get somebody onto your project and they try to pull down your code and they just can't get it to compile or, or maybe it just doesn't work the same way on their computer or they forgot to install a library or maybe they're using a different operating system, blah, 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 blah. It could be any reason. Now Vagrant comes in and saves the day. It means that everybody has the same environment. They have the same libraries and it's vanilla. It's not mixed up with any of their software so it's going to run the exact same way. Now, Vagrant is scripted with a provisioning system and the predominant ones are called Puppet and Chef. However, today we're not going to be using them. We're going to be using one called Salt. And the reason why I want to use Salt is that Salt is designed to be lightweight. It's actually, in my opinion, more capable than Puppet and Chef. However, it's also, from the ground up, supposed to be very lightweight. Now, if you're going to be having this kind of configuration file in your development environment, you don't want it to be 100 freaking files. Um, and that's, that's a big problem with Puppet and Chef. If you want to make your development environment vagranted and use Puppet and Chef, you're going to have all these files and you might end up with more vagrant salt of Puppet configuration or Chef configuration than actual code. So, I hope you enjoy this screencast and let's get started. Now the first thing you need to do, other than get my face out of the way, is to make sure you have Vagrant installed. So, there's a number of ways you can get it installed, and it should be compatible with all your operating systems, but basically, go to this website, which is vagrantup.com, and follow the docker to get it installed. Now, the next thing we want to do is make sure that we have, um, well, we install the compatibility plugin that allows us to work with Salt inside Vagrant. So, you need to type this command, which is very straightforward, Vagrant plugin install Vagrant salt. Simple. I've already got it installed, so we're not going to be needing that tonight. Um, okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to pull down, we want to pull down my existing project. Now, it's not Vagranted yet, but we're going to be converting it so I can show you how easy it actually is. So, today is going to be, we're going to be using a a example web application which is just an online store that I've created. Now this online store needs it needs a database. It needs it uses crazy libraries that need it that need stuff to be compiled and need prepackages to be installed. And this is not something that I guess somebody would just be able to walk in and type one command to get it all working. But with Vagrant we're going to prove them wrong. And we're going to be able to do that in one command. Okay, so we've got our project what I've done is I've actually gone and configured Vagrant um, beforehand because I don't want you guys to sit through all that kind of typing. Uh, so in this case, let's find that. It's in my repositories and it's called no dev Vagrant example. So let's pull that. Now, Vagrant, Vagrant runs or is, the Vagrant configuration sits in the same location as your development environment. So, what we're going to do is we're going to move that configuration out of its folder and into our environment. What did we actually move? Well, we actually moved basically a folder called SRV and a Vagrant file. We're going to be walking in, walking through how this is configured in a second. So now that I've done that, um, I'm just going to type Vagrant up and that's going to get our virtual environment building. While that's doing its thing, let's move it out of the way so you can see what it's doing. Well, let's walk through the config. Alright, so the first thing is the Vagrant file. Now, everywhere you see this, if you type Vagrant up, it's going to build an environment for you. And it's really simple and easy to configure. As you can see, we've got barely any lines of code here. Um, it's written in Ruby, so don't be too scared. The first line basically says, hey, we're going to be using a virtual machine which is called Precise64. Now Precise64 is the flavor of Ubuntu um, and 
I thought it would be a good, op good, good starting base for my development environment. Now the next thing is we're saying we have this folder in our directory called SRV and we want to map that to forward slash SRV inside the VM. Now what that means is that any file inside SRV, which we'll be walking through in a second, is actually able to be accessed through this same path. Um, and that's what actually where the power of Vagrant actually comes, is that it links your desktop into your development environment, which makes it really easy to modify code here, as well as see it running inside the environment. Okay, so the next line of code is really simple as well. We're going to be using a provisioning system called Salt. Now Salt needs to be configured. Its configuration file is inside SRV Minion, which we'll be walking through next. And this command, which is run high state command, is basically every time we turn on the VM, we want Salt to enforce its state. Now, a state is basically what should be installed, what should be running, and how things should be configured. So if we update the state, then the state of the server changes. So if we say we now need this new user account to be there, well that user account will be there every time high state runs, which is every time we turn on our VM. Now, this part I've left untouched and we'll be modifying it later. It's basically where we can configure our VM even further to do even better integration with our desktop. Okay, as you can see here, it's been running, it's still going. Um, first thing it did was create a new VM. It mapped the SSH port to uh, 2222. And then it, it synced these two folders, which we'll be walking through in a second. And it installed Salt. So you don't actually need Salt installed on your computer to run this, you just need the plugin. Um, it actually will download Salt and install it inside your VM. And then it's called the salt.highstate command, which is basically um, going to be configuring our app, uh, which will walk through exactly what that script's doing in a second. So this is the infamous SRV folder. Inside there, there's a minion file, or minion file, yeah. Now, basically, Every line is really, really straightforward. Master localhost. Salt is designed to run on hundreds of computers across large networks. Um, and basically, Salt minions listen to their masters and get all their commands from their master. In, the, in our case, there's only one computer. So the master is itself. You are your own master. Um, okay, and also configuration is stored centrally. But in this case, we're going to be accessing it locally. Uh, very straightforward. Now, my, now, Salt comes pre-built with a lot of modules that allow you to interact with really popular products. Um, and one of them is MySQL. So we're going to be using those pre-built modules to configure a MySQL database, which our application needs. Um, and basically, for that to work, we basically need to tell Salt how to connect to our database. Now, these are all the stock things that come in when you install MySQL, so it's really straightforward. Okay, we're nearly, at the, we're nearly at the meat, we're nearly at the magic. <clears throat> Before we get there, we have to go to this file, top.sls, basically, this is sort of an artifact that's from, I guess it's, it's part of Salt's uh, wider configuration that's needed to talk to hundreds of servers. This is how you configure which servers are in which groups and get which states. In our case, all servers, which is only one, gets the node state. Now let's look at the node state. So node basically just refers to node.sls and this is where all the magic is. Now we're going to be configuring our server, installing all of our services, making sure they're all running, all of our dependent libraries and even running our initial configuration for our application in, mm, let's say, 57 lines of code and not verbose code if you have a look at it as well. So this is where the power of salt is. If you look at Puppet or Chef, man, you will be overwhelmed with the amount of lines that you have to munch through just to get anything done. All right, so the first thing we say is we want MySQL Server to be installed. We want the MySQL service to run, but hey, wait, make sure that MySQL Server is actually installed before you try and run it. Uh, Python MySQL DB, that's required by salt to be installed if we're gonna be using the built-in MySQL package because it, it uses this library. Pretty simple. Okay, we're also gonna be configuring a database and some user accounts. So basically we say we want a user called test user with a password of devman to 
be included in our well to be created in our database server. Next thing is we want a database to be created, which is called example DP. And lastly, we want um, to give all access or all privileges to test to to the example database for the test user. Really simple. All right, my application is a Node.js application, so we need that installed. Uh, we're going to be configuring via Node Package Manager, so we need that installed. It's written in CoffeeScript, so we need that installed. Now I've got some libraries, one's called Node Expat that actually needs these two um, operating system libraries to be installed as well. Build Essential is just going to let me configure or compile C++, which is what, which is what we'll be doing, as well as libexpats for my expat um, library inside my application. And now every time we start our VM, I want it to run this command inside this forward slash vagrant. Wait a minute, what's forward slash vagrant? I'll we'll get to that very shortly. And basically this is gonna configure my node application and we need to make sure that it runs very last. When all the other dependencies are satisfied, we can run it. Okay, now if you probably noticed that this is um, finished loading, so let's jump into our development environment. Okay, vagrant SSH. All right, beautiful. As you can see, very good SSH, we can now be jumping in. Now, remember how this command was run inside this directory? Well, that, can, that directory is synced with our development, our actual source code. So if we have a look here, and we go to where our vagrant sits, and we do touch file, you will see that we can find that new file somewhere over here. There it is. So what that means is I can I can edit my code and I can edit my code and see it replicated inside my development environment, which means I can use all my tools and as if I'm not using a VM. That's why Vagrant is so awesome if you haven't already realized. Alright. So let's see if that worked. MySQL, that's running. Let's go see if that MySQL database got created. Sure did. Example DB, there you go, boom, boom. All right, now, let's check if my application actually runs. Now, just to show you that it's not so straightforward, it doesn't, oh, actually it does now because we've installed the libraries because uh, they it's being configured. But that doesn't matter. It. <clears throat> It doesn't. It does run inside our Vagrant, which is awesome. But how do we access it? Ah, now this is where um, our original configuration file needs to be edited. Just to show how easy it is to do things on the fly. If we need to access a new service, or we need to do something like that, uh, it's really easy. Uh, first, the first thing we want to do is we want to open that file, which is Vagrant file over here, um, and it's really straightforward, we just type in this command, or we add this directive here, which is basically config.vm port forward, a forward port, um, my application listens on 3000, so let's forward port 3000 to hey, let's port it to port 3000, okay, um, now once we're inside, or when once we've made a change to our con a configuration, we can just type in vagrantly reload, and that should redo our configuration. So it's going to shut it down and it's going to start it back up with the new configuration. As you can see, our vagrant's been taken down, and we should be able to get this thing up and running very quickly. As you can see, our new port has been mapped, which is really good. Everything's been going very smoothly, which is really good to see and um, I hope you guys can see how crazy easy it is to configure and deploy a vagrant environment um, and that's what it's supposed to be it's supposed to make things simpler I mean the amount of things we need to learn these days to even build any piece of software is crazy um, however vagrant is something that you will will be happy that or thankful that you learn Okay, so as you can see that while my 
Vagrant boots up, it actually calls high state, the high state command every single time. Meaning that if we've changed our states, it will make sure that those new states are applied. And we're going to do that in a second so you can see what's going on. Okay, so now that we've mapped that port and we know my application runs on it, um, ah, it's saying error. Oh wait, sorry, my bad. Vagrant SSH. Okay. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we're gonna pump jump back into our environment, which is vagrant SSH, and let's go to our forward slash vagrant folder, which is where our environment is, and run that server of ours. Alright, beautiful. As you can see, um, my web store runs. Okay, now let's show you, let me show you how easy it is to modify this web store. So, let's just open the index. Cool. And welcome Vagrant. We'll save that. Bang, there you go. So, can you see the integration and how simple and seamless it is? All right, now another thing that Puppet and Chef lack when it comes to Sol or Vagrant is, or Sol with Vagrant, is that it's, you have to maintain this configuration. Let's say you needed a new library, or, and you, or you're gonna be using uh, a proxy and things like that. Well, you're gonna change, or you're gonna install the software inside your VM. You're gonna forget to update your configuration. And that is if it's exceptionally difficult to actually show that configuration. But Salt makes it so easy and it makes it almost seamless to get, get through. For example, let's say um, for whatever reason my software required Vim. All I do is I open my node.sls file, I type in package, I type in Vim, and then I say package.installed, beautiful, save. Now instead of installing Vim via the normal route, all I do is I do this, write this command called salt call, and I, I force the height state inside my VM, which means I don't have to reboot my VM, I don't have to do all this crazy arduous process, and this makes sure that um, my configuration stays up to date and my VM can be configured quickly. Um, so as you can see, it's now it's now installing Vim, and you'll be able to see how it's now going to appear. The next time somebody pulls down this Vagrant or this source code, they're going to have Vim installed as well, which means this environment is really easy to maintain and won't slow you down. As you can see, Vim is installing, and once that's in, we'll be good to go. Yeah, just finished. All right, Vim's installed. As you can see, Vim now works. All right, guys, that's all I have time for today. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I hope this has been really useful for you guys. And I hope you guys start using Salt with Vagrant or Vagrant at all. And um, I look forward to creating some more screencasts. Stay tuned.